I'm going to talk about anesthesia and surgery of the aortic heart and thoracoabdominal aneurysm. It's really important aortic team, a multidisciplinary team with a good communication, coordination, and collaboration. And some questions about pre anesthetic evaluation it's acute or chronic pathology, isolated affectation, or part of the situation comorbidities, systems involved, analyze, image, test, street control of blood pressure, drugs of the patient like antiagregants and anticoagulants, if it's acute pathology, associated complication, and really important pain control. Firstly, apply antibiotic prophylaxis, monitoring large caliber venous lines, arterial pipelines, PVC, cardiac output, temperature, neurological control, echocardiography, and analytics. There are multiple monitors for neurological function, like a biospectral index, cerebral oximetry, electroencephalogram, a bulk potential, transcranial doppler, and jugular golf venous oxygen saturation. By spectral index is a continuous and non-invasive monitoring. Uh, it uh, measures anesthetic depth, suppression rate higher than 80% in four hours about electroencephalogram suppression. Sudden decrease indicate cerebral hypoperfusion. Cerebral oximetry is most used brain monitoring. Class 1 recommendation, level B, is continuous and non-invasive monitoring, enforce about a brain metabolism, oxygen supply consumption balance. Electrocephalogram asymmetry, it can indicate unilateral carotid perfusion, vein cerebral hypertension, brain hypoperfusion, and max previous RS or artifact due to the proximity of the arterial cannula. Echocardiography is a continuous monitoring of cardiac function throughout the surgery. About brain protection, hypothermia is one of the main measures. Reduce oxygen consumption 6 to 7 percent each grade to 18 grade, 60% of patients have isolectric electroencephalogram. There is variability, a safety time about 30 minutes, and there are neurological lesions uh, from 3 to 12% of patients. Cerebral perfusion, retrograde uh, perfusion technique, or integrate perfusion, uni or bilateral. This is the most used technique. A low moderate hypothermia with a flow of 10 to 15 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Other protective actions are glycemic control, hemodilution, less viscosity, improves flow, acid base balance, alpha stat, head ice packing, avoid uh, overheating and hyperthermia, pharmacological measures like barbiturates. And what to know about thoracoabdominal aneurysms? What do we know about open surgery for thoracoabdominal aneurysms? It's a high risk surgery with bleeding, coagulopathy, infection risk, renal pulmonary and cardiac failure risk, and risk of paraplegia. This type of aneurysm presents. 13 difference from the rest of thoracic aneurysms. Do not require cardiac arrest. Its extension is wide and can extend the diaphragm. Its surgical treatment carries a high risk of postoperative paraplegia. There are hybrid, hybrid approach with stents and the bridging. I cannot define it like the perfect storm. Anesthetic goals are organ protection, organ protection, and for last, organ protection. 
Differential ventilation is necessary with a double human cube intubation verified with a fiber optic bronchoscopy, set protective ventilation parameters, recruitment maneuvers of the leg, lung, change the double lumen tube, and consider cleaning fiber optic bronchoscopy if necessary. The incidence of pulmonary complication from 55 to 62 and I would like to show this paper because they have good results with non-invasive ventilation in the postoperative period. The positioning of the patients is very important. Protective measures must be established for the prevention of associated injury. The angle of the shoulders with the hips and the surgical approach depends on the type of aneurysms from 4 to 8 intercostal space. Two events can occur ischemia with vascular wall damage and reperfusion with cellular extravasation. What preventive action? A tip bypass. They unlock the left atrium and maintain by a centrifugal pump a pressure proximal to the clamping of 70 to 18 millimeters of mercury and a mean distal pressure of 60 to 70 millimeters of mercury as proposed by Coselli. And what factors associated with renal function deterioration impair renal function prior surgery, aneurysm extension, graft ischemia time, total surgery time, development of reperfusion syndrome, amount of blood products transfusion, and hemodynamic instability. Other protective action for spinal cord ischemia. Duration of clamping is the most important factor in the development of a spinal cord ischemia. Different techniques have been used to alleviate this ischemia time as much as possible. Intraoperative, selective perfusion of the intercostal arteries, reimplantation of these arteries to the prothesis as early as possible once the proximal aortic anastomosis is completed. To prevent paraplegia, we can improve perfusion pressure, cerebrospinal fluid drainage with pressure less than 10 millimeters of mercury, detection of risk factor like previous abdominal aortic surgery or vertebral arterial disease, and other protective action like hypothermia, spinal cord pressure higher than 60 millimeters of mercury, cerebrospinal fluid drainage, corticosteroid. But uh, we must know that there are complications associated with cerebrospinal fluid damage, like infection, subdural hematoma, spinal hematoma, headache, or cerebrospinal fluid fibula. Above potentials, Decrease of 50% is considered pathological. Protective action are increased. Medium arterial pressure higher 90 millimeters of mercury. Maintain maintenance uh, of an adequate medium arterial pressure during intra and postoperative period and remove endovascular material like introducer of dilators. Finally, I can summarize my presentation in three points. First point, organ protection. Second point, organ protection. And third point, organ protection. Thanks.